Welcome to the Hookup on Music with your host, Tony Bird. Welcome, everybody, to another Wednesday of, well, work. A lot of work this week, but with the work comes a lot of good music, and that is why we are here tonight. Um, welcome, as Emerson, Lake, and Palmer would say, to the show. All right, you might not get that, but I thought that was uh, ridiculous right there. So uh, that being said, uh, let's get started. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? What have you been up to? What have you been listening to? Please um, do not be afraid to leave some comments here on the socials anywhere. Reach out to us if there's somewhere we're not at and you are and you think that we should uh, be there, please. Um, that would be definite of, um, I would say, of importance. So uh, let's do that. Let's always talk and rock. And uh, tonight we have a lot of stuff crossing the uh, turntable here for you, or the double groove, as we like to say. Um, what that is uh, to start is, uh, well, new releases or new announcements uh, in the tour variety or concert variety, but uh, just announced <laughs> these two. If you're looking online, these two fellas are getting back together. And if you're not, these two fellows happen to be Oasis. How interesting. Originally around from 1991 to 2009, uh, currently just got back together this last week. Um, very, very interesting that the brothers Liam and Noel Gallagher um, are getting back together. Um, there are no for sure's and who other band members uh, will be playing with them um, through the years. Um, Paul Bonehead Arthurs uh, has alluded to possibly being a part of this, but we will have to sit back and wait to see what this band uh, will be releasing or what will be coming of that. I mean, I'm sure uh, these shows that they got coming up are um, going to be, well, number one, very interesting. Um, number two, um, there was a countdown on their website which was very, very uh, interesting that uh, not a lot of people uh, saw coming this this reunion. And then all of a sudden it was, uh, well, a couple days later, they made these announcements that they're going to do um, uh, some dates. And you're like, well, where at? Where can I see them in the United States? Sadly, um, they will not. They'll be playing in like Manchester and London and Dublin and Cardiff. Um, but uh, again, if you happen to be able to make that journey over there, I definitely think it's a good idea to head on across and check out Oasis because, um, honestly, uh, within the last couple of years, I've been grown to appreciate their work a lot more than, um, you know, uh, maybe I did when it was actually coming out. Um, there is a story that I have where uh, <clears throat> I asked for a very specific uh, Oasis song. Um for Christmas, it was What's uh, the Story, Morning Glory, the album. Okay, that's what I wanted because I wanted that song. It was one of the first singles off the album. And instead, um, I received a CD single of a song called um, Some Might Say, and uh, I was not familiar with that, and that was just the single. Very disappointing, and I won't out who did that, but it was just very, very sad time for me because I did not get the full album, and maybe that's why I was so so judgmental for Oasis for a long time, but honestly, they hold their own. Okay, you may be saying, "Do they sound like, I never understood the they sound like the Beatles." I think kinda, but not really. You could say a lot of bands sound like the Beatles. Well, because well, let's be honest, the Beatles uh, inspired quite a lot of bands. You know, you're going to hear a lot of stuff uh, on this tour. You know, you're going to hit uh, certain different songs, but this is the song. Whenever I uh, think of Oasis. Live forever. So it's going to be interesting to see are the voices holding up? Are instruments all intact? Is everybody ready to bring the thunder on um, this tour? We're going to have to wait and see. Hopefully, it's not one of those cash grabs. We don't like those. So uh, we will keep you in tune when we hear more of this. It was very interesting. Um, to uh, hear of these shows, okay? Because if you're looking online at that first picture of them and then you see them in the second picture back, fourth, uh, definitely have grown up. And uh, again, as stated, have not played together in um, 
Well, quite a little bit. So you're saying, how are they going to sound? It has been, um, you know, 15 years. 15 years, it seems to be, since they've uh, last played together. So it's going to be interesting to see what that set list is going to uh, be like. Um, also, rumor mills are swirling. Uh, people are talking. There's a countdown. You can, uh, well, there's a count up. It was a countdown, and it got to the end, and then there was a count up. If you happen to be looking online, um, or if you're listening, um, I am talking about Lincoln Park. There are rumors swirling of Lincoln Park getting back together, and soon an announcement is going to be made. Um, a lot of people think the band is getting back together. Um, very interesting to see who they will get for a lead singer. Um heard some rumors, some 41 rumors. I don't want to dig too much into those until uh, those really come to fruition. But again, it's very interesting to uh, see this kind of stuff uh, be uh, going down because honestly, uh, I don't know about that one. You know, I, especially if the first rumors in which I just shared that I'm hearing um, could be true, but we'll have to wait and see because honestly, Waiting and seeing is half of the fun here. Um, well, at least at the hookup, it's fun um, anywhere waiting and, and, and the magic. I still miss that a little bit. I've, I've shared it before, but the magic of knowing that the album is coming out on this day and you maybe heard the single, but you haven't. So what are you going to be getting into with this new album by said band? Um, the countdown is cool, but the count up was not so cool. Interesting to see where Linkin Park goes from here. Um, Elvis Costello, still touring, still playing tracks. Just uh, read uh, recently, he states he's not going to be playing the song Oliver's Army anymore, which is uh, interesting because it is uh, one of his biggest hits. Um, but that being said, um, tonight we are here um, to talk about Elvis Costello. We had brought them up at the most recent at the show podcast you could go back and listen to that whole episode a great michael keaton breakdown with lots of great musical interludes like uh, the night shift soundtrack with talk talk um just a really really great uh, soundtrack in pcu at the end Elvis costello plays during the movie um, a lot of good songs but i was like haven't talked too much about elvis costello um always really cool album covers elvis costello has um, Armed Forces is where I kind of get my start because, well, end up uh, being, I don't want to say thrown at me because that sounds violent, but thrown towards me that I need to put this on a cassette tape. Um, growing up, uh, this is uh, my father. He would buy CDs and then tell me immediately I need to put them on cassette tapes so then he could go around and cruise um, a track off of Armed Forces, which we've talked about before, The Goon Squad. Just a really, really great shirt. Uh, really, really great song. I was thinking of the song Green Shirt, which uh, is about sex hotlines, which is a very interesting um, topic of songwriting, which is what Elvis Costello is really good at. He is good at the um, excellent looking at things deeper side of songwriting, which honestly... He does in always terrific fashion, no matter, honestly, whatever song you happen to be listening to his of. If it's not watching The Detectives, which you currently heard right there, uh, it is that song, honestly, never has ever gotten old to me. It just has a lot of his songs. I can't think of a song that of his that has gotten like, oh, man, no, I can't listen to this anymore. This is just worn out it's welcome worn out it's uh it's it, it, in my in my um catalog and honestly um you could go back and start just start going through all of his albums and you're not going to be disappointed at all um because honestly he works with great musicians okay let's get started with a lot of the producers on his first couple albums uh is one mr nick Lowe. okay you're saying Nick Lowe? Yeah, that Nick Lowe. Uh, cruel to be kind. Really, really awesome uh, musician. But you know what? As a uh, producer, he is not one to, uh, as a slouch, 
And, you know, the uh, backing band of the attractions, uh, Elvis Costello's backing band, which was Steve Niev, Bruce Thomas on bass, Steve Niev on keyboards, and Pete Thomas on drums. Steve uh, Niev and Pete Thomas still both play with the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, with Elvis. Bruce has been replaced. But, again, going back on these albums, the uh, backing band to Elvis Costello is very, very important um, in lots of different ways, because honestly, if you don't have a good backing band, um, what are you having here as a, a good uh, a musician? Um, um, this is very interesting. And what, another thing that I always think about is let's go back in time a little bit. December 5th, 1977, the Riviera Theater, which uh, was it was a Friday night, but it was a double bill this night. All right, are you ready to hear this? Elvis Costello and the Attractions and Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. You're in Chicago. You're saying to yourself, both of these bands on the same bill? Um, wow. Watching the Detectives uh, along with Miracle Man? I mean, you talk about a great, great concert. I, I always mentally think of that one and just the importance of, of coolness in that uh, regard. Uh, Elvis Costello is uh, no slouch to just being a, a musician, like a musician that just has no, uh, what's the word, uh, no quit in him, okay? A lot of artists maybe only comes out with a handful of albums during their career, uh, albums that you're saying, oh, okay, these albums are some of the best albums of all time. His last album, um, The Boy Named If, was his 32nd studio album. And honestly, I've heard him do some really good music. Um, a really, really great album is the new Basement Tapes he was a part of, which is really good. Uh, go back to 2013 with The Roots, Wise Up Ghost, Elvis Costello, and The Roots. You know The Roots. You know Questlove. Definitely worth your time and your effort to uh, be digging into um, some of that. Honestly, you uh, definitely want to be digging into good tunes like uh, a team up like that, which I don't know how many really go on and go uh, deep. I mean, he's done some great work with Burt Bacharach. Um, he's also uh, produced. He's been a producer, too. Um, the Pogues, the Specials. Um, very, very awesome and interesting uh, musician who, honestly, if you're just familiar with the hits, He's another one going deeper into some of his songs. Veronica, I love that song, along with Allison. I mean, he writes great songs about with a female lead. Um, also, though, uh, Chelsea, a great song, um, Don't Want to Go Back. That's an awesome mixturing of sounds, punk, new wave, reggae, rock. What I find very interesting is one of his favorite artists is The Grateful Dead, so just to hear him go a little bit uh, deeper, and he's a very, very deep musician, um, is something that, honestly, I, I I can admire. And his voice is something to admire, too, because uh, I think it's very unique in, in its presentation on um, the albums and the music. Really great performer. And if it's been a while, check out some Elvis Costello. Uh, we're currently in the process of trying to go through every one of his albums. We'll check back in when we're done. Now, Blind Melon. Familiar with the band? Familiar with No Rain? Familiar with the B-Girl? There's a little bit more to the band. The band that was, uh, well, put together in um, 1990. And originally around from 1990 to 1999. Sadly, because of the passing of Shannon Hoon. You're saying, oh, who's Shannon Hoon? Shannon Hoon was the lead singer from Lafayette, Indiana not too far from here or if you are a purdue fan um right outside where purdue is in west lafayette he was from lafayette but the band blind melon um their their alt uh, alternative rock neo psychedelic those are some terms that get thrown around when, when when talking about them but that debut album's got some songs that really really cook time paper scratcher tones of home um soak the skin um, soak the sin. I said soak the skin. Um, watch a lot of horror movies. We're getting really excited about uh, Halloween. And uh, my main man, uh, Yumper, he's putting together that 31 Days of Horror. Look out for that. 
But back to Blind Melon, um, really awesome at uh, being a band, a really good band at that. And I think when um, No Rain was released, they kind of, uh, you know, got written off. Okay, this is interesting. In 2022, Guitar World ranked Blind Melon um, top the 30 greatest guitar rock albums of 1992, which is uh, number eight. So, you know, 1992 was huge in uh, a lot of guitar and a lot of different ways. But uh, Bly Mellon, uh, really, really, really interesting. That video, No Rain, it kind of stuck with me a little bit. But a song that really, really um, I enjoyed a little bit more than, than No Rain is the song Galaxy off their second song, second album, Soup. That's uh, Bly Mellon on JBTV. Shannon Hoon, what a sadness of, of him um, passing away. Because honestly, the amount of music that he could have made in this band where they could have went, um, it's really, uh, really, 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 really um, interesting. Okay. Um, his influences were Grateful Dead, The Beatles, John Lennon, Bob Dylan. Not to say that you need to have those influences to be, uh, but just a really, really um, <clears throat> huge. And honestly, I always remember him. Um, he was, uh, he was, uh, his sister was friends with Axl Rose. So he befriended uh, Axl Rose and he was on uh, the Garden Don't Cry. Excellent tracks from Usual Illusions 1 and Usual Illusions 2. And he also appears in the video of Don't Cry. Um, Shannon Hoon was really really awesome in uh, many many different ways and um going back and listening to some of these albums listening to soup and listening to that first album um it, it makes you say well, the the big what if that we talk about here you know the what if what could have been um sadly you know passing away um was not what I'm sure he wanted because he had a young daughter he was only 28 years old um sadly um he had addiction issues. He was in and out of rehab. Um, but that the thing being is the final album, Soup. Um, even a counselor was hired to try to uh, try to help, but uh, unfortunately, he was let go. And um, you know, here we are with this music. And he is uh, sadly he is uh, buried in Dayton, Indiana. Um, really interesting. You know, maybe, you know, I would love to go out there and love to honor, you know, him because he's an amazing musician. And I think that would just be crazy to uh, go out there and just try to see if, uh, you know, see some of the the honoring that's been going on for Shannon Hoon. But go back and check out uh, nothing more honoring than listen to those uh, first two albums, Blind Melon and Soup. And uh, get back to me if it's been a while and uh, let me know what you think of those albums. Really, really, really good albums. Um, Simple Minds um, have been popping in and out of a lot of uh, playlists and a lot of places I happen to uh, be be at. Of course, you are familiar with Don't You Forget About Me from um, the uh, famed um, Breakfast Club soundtrack, but uh, a lot of other great songs. Waterfront, Alive and Kicking, um, She's a River. Um, Another album cover that I remember seeing this cassette uh, just just laying around um, down down downstairs in a bunch of cassettes. It's the Once Upon a Time album, which has a live and kicking on it. And uh, one of the songs that I really enjoy is All the Things She Said. Um, Jim Kerr, lead vocalist, his 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 oh his delivery, his enunciation of lyrics. Are, are are just a really really interesting um just a really interesting vibe and if, if it's been a little while go back and listen to some of these guys music um you're looking for something just with and still touring too okay um what i like a lot about this band is <laughs> the lead singer who i just mentioned and guitarist Char charlie birchell are still in the band okay as founders of the band which is cool nobody is you know at least there's a couple guys still left in the band um from those original days um but a 
all around really, really, really great, great, great band. Other guys in the band have um have played uh what's the word I'm looking for? Have played a very significant role for a little while. Um Jed Grimes, bass guitarist, 2010, he's been in the band since, since then. He was part of uh, a Danny Wilson, which was a Scottish pop band. Very interesting. Um, but overall, a great band. Um, pouring still. If you, It's been a while. Again, dig through some of those albums and uh, reintroduce yourself. Um, honestly, I this is what I've been doing. I'm only telling you what I do or what I've done through the week. Um, Jim Kerr, though, is a really, really great um, musician and honestly, a great songwriter. Um, you know, you go back to Simple Minds as a whole, and they have been around since 1977. And honestly, don't you forget about me. That's 1985. So there's a lot of ground to cover before that. So go back into that and dig into that ground because honestly, it's worth your time. Just like worth your time always is a little Stevie. There you go again, Tone. Why are you bringing up Little Wing? Why? Because recently Pearl Jam played a show at Wrigley Field and they ended with Little Wing. Um, what an amazing, amazing um song, honestly, is uh Little Wing and Pearl Jam doing Little Wing. I can imagine, um, please check it out. I mean, you can see it live and in all its glory, but being in the front row, if anyone was to happen to be in the front row to hear that, I could only imagine how really awesome and transcending that would be. Um, as a whole, it sounds like this, 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 these Wrigley shows, especially the first one was, was, was very transcending. Um, opening the show with release. That's, that's a real big game changer. Um, and, and like, I keep going back in my head, little wing, um, little wing, oh, little wing, um, yellow lead better. They started to play a little bit. And honestly, Mike McCready's guitar on, um, that is just really, really, really awesome. Um, song is actually yellow better, a uh, yellow lead better about uh, a friend of Vetter's who was from Chicago named Tim Ledbetter. Very interesting. I always like when that is, is mixed. Um, again, um, sometimes, um, he is mixed in, which he did that night, the Star Spangled Banner, Little Wing, a really great, um, version. Check that out if you can, but bringing up Stevie Ray Vaughan and anyone being able to play a little bit of, uh, a Little Wing, um, wherever they are is, is definitely, uh, of, of importance, um. Van Halen's live right here, right now. This is a great, great live album that I've been digging into lately. Um, I've been on the track of some really, really great live albums. And uh, Van Halen's live right here, right now is no uh, stranger to amazingness. Because of those recent Sammy Hagar shows that I talked about, you might have been at. Um, been digging into that Sammy catalog deeper and deeper and deeper. And songs that I never really respected before, finding myself to respect just a little bit more, which which is really honestly why we listen to music. You don't have to like everything, but maybe sometimes you can come around to things that you used to not like. But uh, Van Halen, though, this is a great live album. And even if you are a day fan, I'm not seeing where you would find a lot of fault in this album. It is, it is, it is a rocking affair. Um, and a lot of Sammy songs are rocking and they don't really sometimes get the credit that they deserve. Um, especially for unlawful carnal knowledge, which this is just loaded with pound cake, judgment day, okay, um, run around, um, standing on top of the world. I mean, you could go on forever um, on this, of course, right now. And that's just that album. And that was a huge, huge album. Um, the, the album, though, it was combined songs that were performed over two nights um, at the Selland Arena in Fresno, California. Um, most of the songs are from the first night, uh, but really, really, really great is, um, or it's really raw. And honestly, there's been a, like I've said, a lot of performances lately from this era that have been released from the vault and they were cooking. Alex Van Halen was, was cooking on the drums. I mean, we always talk about Eddie, but 
I'm watching even stuff a little bit uh, before this. They have a live without a net recording. Eddie's Eddie's up there playing the keyboards. He's got his MC Hammer parachute pants. Just a really, really, really great uh, affair. You know, there is only four David Lee Roth era songs on this. You really got me. Um, but is one of them. Um, but honestly, you're not there for jump. You know what I mean? You're not there for uh, um, some of the ain't talking about love. You know, you're Sammy. He could do those songs or Michael could sing those songs. But some of those Sammy songs are good and worth really digging and diving into. Um, that being said, I just think you should go on and, and check that live album out. It is a great, great, great live album. Um, another sh- non-stranger to great live albums. We talked about one uh, on the show before that had uh, the doings of Mr. Peter Gabriel. Um, this one that I'm talking about currently right now it has to do with the doings of, well, Phil Gen- Phil, uh, Phil Phil Genesis. I was called Phil Jones. Phil Collins taking over the lead role. Um, recently, we talked about Mr. Peter Gabriel. Now we're going to dig into a little bit of a live album, um, Seconds Out, 1977. Okay. Um, this is their first with touring drummer uh, Chester Thompson, which is really great. Um, the song that I always really crawl to, to this, literally and figuratively, is The Carpet Crawlers. I really like uh, Phil Collins' version of this song. I think he his vocals are really, really good. And I think he's just really good. Um, but that being said, the album in itself is really awesome. Um, it's produced by uh, David Henschel. Um, a really excellent, uh, well, engineer and producer who's worked on such albums as All Things Must Pass, Goodbye Yellow Book Road, Elms by Queen, um, so forth, and um, so much, which is honestly um, very, um, it's just a really, 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 really great album. Um, so please, um, if you have not listened to Seconds Out, especially if you're into loud awesome prog music with great um just just a great sound this is the album that is uh for you um but back to the album um it was uh finished after a seven month tour in support of the wind and withering album um they had to go through live recordings and assemble this that had to be lots and lots of fun um but also it might not be it could have led to arguments um but that being said we 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 say you've picked the best uh genesis um on this one because honestly this is uh an excellent 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 uh example of a band um again before uh well before steve hackett leaves uh right after peter gabriel leaves and they become pretty much a three piece um but honestly you got bill bruford um, you're not really going to be doing um, too bad. You're doing Supper's Ready. You're doing the cinema show. Big fan of Squonk, Dance on the Volcano. Really, really great land lies down on Broadway. Um, they're digging into all of what, the musical box. The one thing about Genesis uh, compared to Van Halen is they, they had no problems digging back into that older catalog and uh, exposing all of the great songs, no matter who was singing in the band. But... That being said, Seconds Out is amazing from 1977, um, October 14th, literally, which is just right around the corner. So keep listening to that. It's got some good spooky sounds on that. Um, Unfortunately, we have a little bit of a a sad news. Um, Queen guitarist Brian May had a stroke recently that left him with no uh, control or use of uh his arm um which is sad but he said that the good news is is he could play guitar after the events and uh he's doing better so that's good um it's interesting that after a stroke his main thing which at 77 i guess i could understand if it's been your main passion is guitar we want brian may to get better that's what i want um because honestly news of the world is one of the greatest albums of all time um his guitar playing is impeccable. It is amazing. It is always, always really good. Um, I'm going to close my eyes and point to one of these albums on the screen. 
And that one I'm going to say something about. Rubber Soul by the Beatles. An amazing, amazing album. Check out that last track, Run For Your Life. I like that track a lot. The guitar is awesome. Lyrics are kind of scandalous for their time. The Beatles are always great at presenting amazingness. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Tony B. This is The Hookup on Music. Please join us this uh, Friday for at the show when we will be uh, starting at 8.30. Got a lot of good movies we're talking about, including Jurassic Park. Na, 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 na. Great music on there, but also got a great soundtrack uh, to pick that I would love for you to comment on in the comments. Um, also, go back and check out uh, all the other good stuff going on here at the show. We have a uh, great college football being discussed by luke who's been here on the uh, uh, show we have the great brian who i want to try to get on soon here to talk about riot fest his the great drafty pod um but uh please everyone out there take care i want everyone to have a good good night day whatever you happen to be and just know sometime soon we are going to get together live and talk about some music so everyone out there Stay tuned. Take care, everyone out there. Have a great, great rest of your week, no matter what you're doing. Jam those tunes. Thank you for listening. Please look out for the audio version wherever you jam.